lives. And let's talk about the constant uh, references we hear a year in, year out to knife amnesties, um, attempts to, you know, impress upon young people that if you carry a knife, it's more dangerous, not less dangerous. Don't think you're protecting yourself. Might end up hurting or, dis or killing somebody else. You might end up being very seriously wounded or killed yourself. Don't do it. It isn't big. It isn't wise. It's a really lousy idea. We don't ever seem to quite get that through. Nels is absolutely right in what he says. This has to be stopped. Now, I'm not naive enough to think that we will ever live in a crime-free nirvana, no. but it is with a very heavy heart that I have to report this afternoon at Kennington Underground Station, again in South London, a fair few miles from Shortlands, but still part of South London, the vast metropolis. Two people were stabbed on the underground system this afternoon. Oh they gosh. are both in a hospital, critical but stable, and so this dreadful, repetitive, never-ending scourge of knife crime continues. And, and, and Nelsie, I mean, obviously we, we are aware of this in this awful way, as if it's a kind of, kind of insidious, repetitive kind of backtrack to our lives, especially in urban areas. I mean, I've lived in London all my life in London. It's kind of a, a, a constant theme of London life, isn't it? And same in big cities all over the country. Sadly, it's becoming increasingly common. Um, it has become increasingly common, and it's something, again, I maintain, must not be allowed to be normalised. Certainly, anywhere, it shouldn't be normalised. Um, in London, any parts of the UK, anywhere in the world whatsoever, that, uh, that something has gone viciously wrong for a young man in the prime of his life, where he should essentially be as serious as it gets in the education system, try to make something, try to make, create a better tomorrow, not just for himself, not just for his family, not just for the community, but for all of us, as we all work to make a better futures for all of us too. So him to let himself and to let everybody down so much and to be so vicious that he would actually carry such a big knife, not wear, barely disguise himself, be very, very discernibly recognisable and pretty much throw away his life that... I can't see that man see the streets again in about another 20 years. If I was on the, if I was a judge, there was no way whatsoever the book would have to be thrown at it. I think there's a lot of things going on here. I think uh, there's so there's it's a cocktail of a range of things. Uh, there's clearly a mental health situation going on here that has to be addressed. There's clearly an economic inequity situation that has to be, that has to be addressed too. I feel that uh, we have to, of course, we can't shy away from the knife crime situation. But I feel that like we have to incentivize young people, particularly young people who come from um, what I'll describe as nothing to lose um, environments where they could potentially spill into the hands of the wrong sorts of people. Now, these sorts of people, we there's nothing more dangerous than something to society than, than, the, than the man or woman with nothing to lose. So if you leave these sorts of people roaming the streets, you're going to end up with situations like that. So my belief, my thinking would be that we should rewind the clock a little bit that uh, reignite, re 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 recreate things such as the educational maintenance allowance, which was an incentivization for young people to stay in school and give them economic opportunities to create, to give this person a stake in society, a point where holding a knife and throwing away your life, throwing away your entire future makes no sense whatsoever. I mean, that's, a, that's a, as far as I can see, a, a, a wise and kind of far-sighted idea, isn't it? Because I remember... Once, I think, Peter, we were doing a programme together a long time ago and, and, and people said the greatest prevention of, of, of knife and gun crime is optimism and potential. If you see that you have a potential in life, that you could become something, go somewhere, travel, you know, fall in love, have something, own something, be something, you don't want to die and you probably don't want to kill anyone else either because you don't want to be banged up for it. You don't really want to do that. But if you feel nothing and no hope and nothing's going on that could possibly engage you, as, as Nell said, that's the nothing to lose people. And what you have just said ties beautifully into what you and I have discussed before and what people are sometimes shocked to hear me saying. We need to deny young people the opportunity to arm themselves and enter the illegal drugs industry. Yeah. The illegal drugs industry is so damaging with the violence that it brings to our streets. And when, eventually, because it will happen one day, possibly, I fear, not in my lifetime, 
But when we legalise and regulate the entire illegal drugs industry, those job opportunities for a 14, 15, 16 year old with a mountain bike, a nine mil or a zombie knife <coughs> will simply not exist because the industry will have been ripped out of the vice-like grip of organised crime. It would take me many hours to explain in depth how we do that, but it needs to be done. It will be done at some point. And what we will also do is have a firmer handle on people who take illegal drugs, and I don't condone any of that, and maybe, just maybe, we will be able to reduce the chronic mental health issues that grow out of people taking illegal drugs. I mean